Well, hello, chaps and jabbits, and welcome to a Double Back Monthly for March 2018. Woohoo! Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> what is the Double Back Monthly, you're asking? Well, it's a blog that I set up in conjunction with my Patreon, where I go through everything that I've done in the month of March. Well, not everything, because you don't want to know about the time that we baptised little Robin, do you? But anyway, it's made up of various sections. The first section is, what have I been up to? A review of reviews. So I go through all the videos and, and bits and bobs that I've done. Then I go to my first and last section, which is a first impression segment where I talk about all the brand new games that I've played for the very first time and let you know if this is a game that I'll probably play for the last time or it probably will be a game that I'll probably play again. I normally go to a, a question time segment after that, but I'm going to cut that out this one because it's, I've got a lot of brand new games to talk about. And then I'll finish up with the monthly prize draw. Your the chance for one of my patrons to get themselves a free little envelope of goodies. So without further ado, let's crack on. So what games have I reviewed? I've reviewed one game. But I have done three how to play videos for three Kickstarters. Um, let's start with the review first. I have reviewed the game, finally, Photosynthesis. A game where players are, I don't know, gods, and they are building trees in a forest and then killing them to get points. Yes, there's that whole circle of life thing in this abstract game which uses trees. But the thing is, the theme is so enigmatic in this game because you're getting energy points from the sunlight that your trees trap. And if they're small trees, they don't trap, get as much energy as the big trees. And any trees which are hidden behind another tree and in the shadow, so to speak, don't collect any energy whatsoever. What's the energy for? Well, the energy is to do actions. The more energy you have, the more actions you can do, or the more powerful actions you can do. You can build uh, bigger trees or make trees grow, uh, especially the bigger they get, the more expensive they are, and the more energy they're going to use to, to grow. You're going to need to chop them down. That's going to cost you energy. You're going to need to buy uh, trees and seeds from a board, your player board, and to put to your reserve, which will then go onto the board, which will then, when you remove them, go back onto your player board. And so you have this circle of life thing. It's a very, very family friendly but a bit thinky not too slow this game does flow fluidly it's very thematic it's very elegant it's very calm as well it's not a game that you're going to play and be stressed about when someone takes his place it is a really elegant uh, fantastic but definitely my cup of tea kind of abstract game and it's all green which is my favorite color and this it's gonna be, I think this is gonna be a good uh, Essen Spiel winner. This is gonna be Spiel des Jahres winner. That is photosynthesis. Let's talk about the Kickstarters. The first one was a Kickstarter, but it's no longer a Kickstarter. It's now going to be a retail game, and that is Immortal 8. Immortal 8, again, players are gods, and they are constructing civilizations and heroes and wonders from scratch and they're doing this in a card drafting mechanism where they're going to be drafting a maximum of about five cards maybe less maybe zero cards um, it depends on how you want to play the game and what cards come your way this is a very quick playing game when you know the rules because um, it lasts two rounds and as i said you're not going to be drafting many cards at all um, you're going to be building buildings that you can use or the other players are going to use and you're going to be creating heroes which are going to be used to help you in some way and there's going to be these wonders which are going to be placed in the middle of the table and players can use them willy-nilly as they need to. This is a very deep kind of Magic the Gathering the drafting game where you're going to need to know the cards and how they combo together and how they work off of each other. And also you're going to need to know a bit about your god. Yes, each player has their own individual god. But nobody's going to know who is who. And that's where some of the element of fun of the game comes in, is trying to deduce which player is which. Because sometimes you're going to be building buildings which are going to help you. But sometimes it's best to build buildings which 
you know that the other player is going to want to use because they help you in the long run. They give you points, and the more they visit your building, the more points you're going to get. And again, each god is going to score slightly differently. There's going to be some basic scoring, so like the ones with, who built the most wonders and the ones that have the most diamonds, whatever. There's scoring that way, but each god is going to score differently. One god will score points for however much chaos there is at the table. One player is going to score for each set of chaos, military and science they're going to have. And so it, there's this whole intriguing thing of like, who are the other gods at the table and how is it going to be best for me to use the cards that I've seen or the cards that are out on the table to, to win the game. This is, as I said, a really deep game and you're going to need to play it a few times before you decide whether this is a game for you or not. Um, as I said, Immortal 8 was a Kickstarter. It's now going to retail. It's going to be out, I think, in, if I remember properly, in August. Uh, this year in France, and then hopefully not long after there will be an English version. Here's, hey, we're English. Another Kickstarter, which is just recently finished and done very well, is Chronicles of Crime, where players are gods. No, players are detectives, and they're trying to solve a crime. This game uses an app, um, so it's half in the table and half in your hand kind of game. Um, Players are playing cooperatively and they're going to be giving a case. This case is dictated to them by the app. They'll have some characters that they're going to meet, some places that they're going to be, and they're going to be scanning the QR codes on these and it'll tell you a bit of story. And you can combo these. This is very much like a point and click adventure, you know, Monkey Island style, where you're trying to combine the right things at the right time in the right places with the right people to, 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 to deduce how this crime happened and who is the perpetrator. It is uh, very colorful, it is very interesting. The whole idea of, you know, this kind of, not Cluedo, but more like Sherlock Holmes consulting a detective as you grab a piece of information. And all the conversations are very small. Um, you're not gonna have like two pages or 15 pages of, of dialogue to read. Everything is contained in very, very small texts, and so you need to look for those clues. Another thing you're gonna need to look for is clues in the game world. Yes, at some stage in the game, you'll go to a location, maybe a crime scene or maybe a, a suspect's house, and you're gonna be able to look around in a virtual reality way. You put the app with some goggles and you put the goggles up to your face and you look around and you explain what you're seeing to your, your other players. And they will collect cards and place these out and these will be the clues which are gonna help you solve this case. You're also gonna have a team of experts that you can phone up and get information from. Um, and it just really feels like you are in a kind of Sherlock Holmes film or you may be more modern kind of like uh, the closer way <laughs> you've got a team of people and they will have their little expertise and you, you you figure out who did who how this crime happened and who did it really really enjoyable um it's finished on kickstarter but it should be out at the end of the year in december i'm not sure if it's going to retail or if it's kickstarter only but i think it will do i think it'll be in retail sometime after that and that was Chronicles of Crime. And also, I've just started working on the soundtrack for Chronicles of Crime because they need a soundtrack on the app, don't they? And the other Kickstarter is Charted, The Golden Age, which is currently running on Kickstarter right now. It's a Euro-style game, much in the vein of, you know, a Ticket to Ride, but it has a few ideas that they've been inspired by by the game Acquire where you're going to be building warehouses in Amsterdam and setting up enterprises. And you're gonna be doing this with a very simple player card mechanism. Each card has a plot of land in Amsterdam and when you play that card, you can build a warehouse on it. You can create an enterprise if you're in the middle of nowhere and then you can get some stocks and sell stocks as need be to get you some money to buy some more cards to put into your hand to buy more warehouses. There's also this merger where if you touch two warehouses together, two enterprises touch, um, the larger one will absorb the smaller one, taking all of its credit, uh, which is really nice. This is very family friendly. Um, it does play just about an hour, over an hour. This is, it has a lovely tactical 
the tactical tactile feel it is very tactical as well knowing when to play the right card at the right time it's currently running on kickstarter so if you're into those types of games um euro style games as i said kind of like ticket to ride but meets acquire um get, maybe you want to go check this one out and over on the Berkey and Badger board game Babble channel, we had just to squeeze out one live podcast due to the fact that Berkey has a very busy schedule trying to get out his game toppers at the moment, which are being distributed as I speak. Um, but we get chance to have a, a live impromptu chat from the <laughs> miniature market over in the state somewhere with Rob Oren. Who else? You know, Miniature Market, Rob Oren, good combination. We ch we chatted about minis and paintings and bits and bobs like that. You can go and check that out live on our YouTube channel, or you can go to our new home on Libsyn. Yes, Berkey and Badger are there now as well. <laughs> You may be wondering what this is doing on the table. Well, yes, I am also working still hard on the soundtrack for the expansions for the Seventh Continent, which comes out later on this year. So I am a busy bee and have been. Yes, if you recognize my dulcet tones on the uh, Batman How to Play videos, you will hear my dull voice. <sighs> Non-stop. Anyway, let's check out what brand new games I've been playing in the first and the last. So here I am over at the back computer looking at all the games that I've played over the past two months because last month I didn't do a first and last section due to the fact that everything going on. So here I am, computer, computer, computer. So here are the, some of the games that I've played for the first time and possibly for the last because this is like first impressions. Um, sometimes a game will, you'll play and it, you'll hit it off and go, yeah, this is a great game, this is my cup of tea. Sometimes you'll play a game and you go, yeah, I, if we play it, play it again, I don't mind. And there'll be some games that you go, nah, nah, <laughs> you couldn't convince me. But um, yeah, let's crack on. First up is a game that I had as a prototype last year and now I got the full final version. So you could count this as a first impression um, or not, it's up to you. But it's Mythic Battles Pantheon, um, a combat skirmish game which sees two or maybe four players going uh, head to head with gods and heroes and monsters on a terrain um, through various scenarios, just going head to head kind of thing. It's a card driven mechanic. You'll have a deck of cards um, after you draft your god and your other characters and you'll be playing a card on your turn which will let them move around the board and do actions. Um, it's very, very kind of a, a great mechanic. Uh, it's kind of like um, Magic the Gathering but in the 3D terrain, you have the terrain which is going to affect your miniatures. You might you might help in defense, it might hinder in defense. Um, you might be able to get over certain areas quicker than other areas. Um, it's a very tactical driven game with a really nice dice mechanic as well. You have these exploding dice. As you're, it's not just a case of, oh, I've got 10 hits against you. It's a case of rolling these dice and the value, you can change the values of them by sacrificing other dice to augment their level and you've got to get past the the monsters or heroes defense to knock them down and again it's kind of like hero clicks each character has strength and as you weaken them they can not move as far and they cannot cut they roll less dice when they attack and they lose certain powers really really interesting uh, game but at the moment I'm finding it kind of not my cup of tea due to the fact that I'm not good at these kind of skirmish games unless they're fun. Um, I'm going to play it some more though because I want to play it with the four player and see how that feels. And I'm going to try some other. I'm going to try some of the other scenarios because I got a lot of it to to play with. And the, the minis look great. The art looks great. The, the game is, you know, ten out of ten in quality. Um, but personally, I, I'm just not enjoying it because I'm having my ass handed to me by my friend who's a genius. Yeah, that's my big battles pantheon. Now in the past I've played Queen Domino, but this is the first time I've played King Domino, which is the first game which came out out of the two. And it's 
It's a simple family game where you are um, drafting domino tiles to place into your kingdom and you make a five by five grid of these tiles and you're going to be connecting up the similar parts of land to get points at the end of the game. That is pretty much it. It's very simple fair. It's one of Spieldish Yaris. Um, I don't think I will play this again after playing Queen Domino, which was, I think, a bit more interesting and a bit more a bit more fun because you've got these extra elements and it made it a bit more gamery. This is very, very basic. I mean, I'll probably play this with young children, but I, I won't jump to the table and say, yeah, I'm going to be playing this again. This is this is going to be one of those ones that the kids are going to have to ask me to play. Um, but it's nice. It's colorful. As I said, it's, a, it's won many awards and um, it's a great family game but it's not my cup of tea. Catch the Moon um, is a dexterity game, which I played at Ludinor this year, and it was taught to us by a young uh, eight-year-old or 10-year-old child who was helping out at Ludinor. Um, and it's a dexterity game where you're balancing ladders upon each other. Uh, you'll be rolling a dice, and the dice will dictate to you how the ladder should be stacked up. You'll either be um, stacking it uh, by connecting it to one ladder, which is already on the on the on the pile, or you'll be touching two ladders. And the object of the game is to stack these ladders up without them falling over. If they fall over, you collect a tear from the moon because it's made you cry. It's it's a simple dexterity game. Um, it's I prefer the more stupider dexterity games like Wobbly, which is marbles all stacked up. <laughs> you got to knock out colours, um, which is fun, especially when the tower falls over and everywhere marbles. Um, this is simple. This is light. Um, it's very nice to look at. The aesthetics are very cool. These these wooden ladders are very nice. They're, they're all crooked, kind of like Roald Dahl maybe, um, or even Salvador Dali ladders. And stacking them up and choosing the right ladder to use to place on top could be fun um i don't mind playing it it's um it's not not my cup of tea but it's not not my cup of tea this is one that i'm going to be probably checking out a bit later in the future and that's catch the moon now i have played kank in space in the past um but this is clank sunken treasures which is an expansion for the original deck building game um where you'll be building a deck and you'll be using this deck to move your character into a dungeon and go deeper and deeper to get the, the richer, more, more points at the bottom um, of this dungeon without getting eaten by the dragon. Um, this is a very much a push your luck deck building game. Um, th this new expansion didn't feel any different to Clank in Space. Um, there was water involved in it, and if you didn't have a certain, if you didn't buy a certain snorkel or whatever it was, you couldn't go into the water uh, without losing life points. Um, yeah, it was okay. Um, nothing spectacular. Didn't stand out for me. It's the same as all the other Clanks. It's just another map with different ways of you know getting around again it still suffers from the same problem of player elimination um, which can be disappointing and uh, sometimes it's luck of the draw as well so um, yeah clank sunken treasures yeah it's more clank it's more the same uh, but slightly different but the same now we're going to talk about clonk which is kind of like the same thing you'll be making a noise as you're drilling in a hole in the ground and hopefully not waking the, the dragon which is going to eat you um, this is a chain card game where each player is a miner and you'll have a cart and you've got to load up that cart with treasures in the middle of the table there'll be um, several rows of cards some of them are face down some of them are face up and you'll be uh, on your turn either trying to make a connection between the cards that you already have, well, the last card that you've put into your trolley. So if it's a red gem with an axe in it, you can either pick up another treasure which either has a, a, is red gem or one with an axe. And you're making a chain to fill up as much as you can. But each treasure has uh, points, money to, to win at the end of the game. And also some of them have dragon eyes, which 
is, you know, if you have the most dragon eyes at the end of the game, you're gonna wake the dragon. There's other special powers involved, um, like a bomb, which you can use to destroy certain cards to get them out of the way if you want to get something behind. Um, it, it's nice, I quite like this game. This is a game that I would like to try again. It, at the moment, it's definitely my cup of tea, but uh, as I said, I'd, I'd need to play it a few more times to find out if it's that perfect game. And that is Clonk. Now a fast paced game called Fuse. You gotta defuse a bomb cooperatively. Yes, this is a game where you'll be rolling dice and then picking one of the dice to add to one of the cards that you have. And these cards are like combinations. So you have to get combinations of dice, either a color or number or stacking them or, no, or doesn't matter which color or number they are. And um, each turn, someone will roll an X amount of dice and then every player will take one of those dice. If there's any dice left, which nobody can take because they don't have the color or the number or whatever to correspond, um, everyone has to discard a dice that they've already placed out of the same color or the same number of the one rolled. And you're doing this against a clock. You have 10 minutes to get through a deck of cards because once you've cleared one of your kind of combinations, you get another one. Um, obviously there's like a, a kind of not a winner, but you know, the player that's diffused the most cards gets like a, yay, a shout out. But um, yeah, this is just fast paced chaos. Um, this is fun. Um, not much else I can say about it. It's it's something that you can play. It's a bit like ghost, ghost splits, you know, it's just something fun that you can throw around and play for 10 minutes and then back away. Um, plays quite a lot of people as well. But uh, yeah, that's Fuse, a timed bomb explosion game. Now we're gonna talk about Imaginarium, which sees you um, buying machines which make dreams and then fixing them to get resources to let you buy machines that will be fixed to give you resources. Yeah, it's one of those games. It's got some very nice art and some, um, some really cool components. And basically you'll be placing your worker out on one of the action spaces, either buying one of the machines or getting some coal. And depending on where you place your character will determine which order you go in the next round. You will have an action card which has these two fixed clock arms and you will have to change it each time you play to two other different actions which is really nice because you have to like really think which actions do I want to do and again th these actions are set in stone on your clock so you can like hire an assistant and maybe repair a machine or repair a machine and combine two machines or whatever and that's another nice thing the machines once you fix them you can combine them and it gives you more resources and you can do special combos and there's there's even a few cards which do an attack on the other players at the end of the game you're basically just trying to uh, achieve a, these objectives there's about nine objectives and each one of them give you points and if you're the first one to do it you get the most points if you're someone else you don't get so many points and once you've got x amount of points uh, that player is the winner. It's smooth, it's nice, it's nice looking. Um, I'm probably, uh, yeah, I don't mind playing this game. Um, it's not a great game, didn't stand out. The theme didn't really come through because the dreams were making resources. But hey ho, I'd play it again. Um, kind of gave me the feeling of Abyss, which I kind of like. So uh, yeah, not too bad. Imaginarium deserves a second play. Itoa is probably not a game that you've probably heard of, but this is what happens if you get Quirkle and Set to have a baby. Yes. This game is a shape, color, coin of corresponding game where you're going to be playing out very much like Quirkle, some cards which have uh, different shapes, different colors, and different numbers in them. And you're trying to make lines like Set of either they have to have the same color, but different shapes and different numbers, or maybe the same color, the same shape, but different numbers. It's one of those kind of really thinky games and you've got to place it out in such a way that it works um, with all the other cards that are placed out. This is a lovely brain burner of a game. This is really, really, this is a, 
I love these type of games, but only at a particular type of day. This is definitely my cup of tea. If you like Quirkle, but you want it to be tougher, um, and you like Set, but you want it to feel like a game instead of just like an observation test, this is the game for you. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. It's small, it's compact. I'd love to see a tile version like Quirkle. Um, it scores, it's, it's the same kind of thing as Quirkle. You score when you put out extra cards. Um, and if you finish a line of four, because there's four different shapes, four different colors, and four different numbers, you get maximum points um, doubled, so to speak. So uh, yeah, really enjoyable. I, uh, I, oh, neither. That, that game there. And now Montoya. No, it's not Montoya, it's a man. Montana. Montana is a, a worker placement game about cowboys and setting up camp. You'll have this map in the middle of the board, in the middle of the table, and you'll have X amount of camps that you're going to need to place out. But each space requires different resources. How do you get these resources? By getting some cowboys and sending them out to work by either collecting cows or, or getting gold or getting wheat and, and getting money, robbing a bank maybe. Um, you'll be spinning this disc thing like in Twister, which will dictate which types of cowboy you get and then you have to choose whether you're going to use them here there or anywhere um, it, it is very much worker placement it's very simple it's very colorful lots of little wooden bits and pieces um, and in fact the game takes longer to set up than it does to play <laughs> it's um it's it's very nice simple it's kid friendly but yeah it lacks something it was just to there um there was this 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 one action that you could do which is really nasty if you choose to do this action every player has to you know vote not vote but they have to choose a space and if each space will give you a resource if you donate certain resources it will pay gold um and sometimes that can be nasty if you don't have what it takes or if you have the gold but you don't have the resources yeah yeah it, it can be nasty um but um uh, it's all around not bad i play it again um but you know it's in the middle it's in the middle that's montana a nice little abstract game called niwa i think it's called niwa it's for two players you're going to build a um, board where you have your castle at your end and your opponent's castle at the other end and it's all hexagon tiles each tile has these spaces which have these different colored walls you have three uh, chinese characters which are very nice and they have these heads with little cones on them and you put two donuts on them colored donuts each donut will let you traverse a a color wall so if you have a green donut and an orange donut on one of your characters they can traverse because the orange is on top they can traverse an orange wall into the next space and then you have to take that off and place it on one of your other characters and so it's, this is a kind of a logical kind of color path and you've got to get to the other player's castle and they're trying to get to yours and you can block them um, sometimes you find yourself going backwards just to go forwards because you've got to move these donuts around from character to character it's very intriguing i liked it very much it's kind of a, a very nice kind of abstract game this is definitely my cup of tea and one that I'm, i would probably put into my collection um it looks nice the color palette i'm not too keen on but it looks nice and it plays nice I mean, maybe it should be do with a third player but um, yeah really enjoyable night niwa niwa and finally you're probably bored of me i've been probably chatting for about 20 minutes or so um a game called small detectives where players are playing kind of like cluedo you'll build this little round city in the middle of the table and you'll have your detective on it. Um, these tiles are made up of characters and weapons, but one of the characters and one of the weapons will be removed from the game, much like in Cluedo. And you'll be using cards to move your detective around, and you'll be able to look at these tiles if you're the only character on there. And it's memory then, because you gotta remember that Rachel's there, and the gun's there, and, and the knife's there, and you're trying to deduce who is the killer and with what weapon um played very very quickly 
uh, plays up to four players, really simple, fun family type of game. It's Cluedo light. Um, enjoyed it very much. There's lots of special powers. You can steal cards from other players with certain cards. Um, you can swap tiles around on the board to confuse people and give them, you know, make it more frustrating. Really enjoyable. Uh, this game is definitely my cup of tea as well. Small Detectives. And that's all the new games, not including the prototypes that I've received. So um, let's move on to the prize draw. So yes, now we're back at the table, um, back at Seventh Continent because I was looking for some inspiration for the new music. Uh, and it's also given me inspiration for the prize draw. He says, dropping cards on the floor. So I can't remember anybody's name. He. So um, let's start with the thank yous first. I want to thank all my Patreons for donating. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Andrew. Thank you. And of course, Robert, thank you. And Kevin, thank you. And then I'm gonna to go to Curly T, thank you. And then uh, Elephant Girl, thank you. And Olivier, thank you. And of course, Mr. Grogan, cheers bud. Okay, so uh, what is the prize draw? The prize draw will give you a chance to win a copy of my last night soundtrack and also I'll throw in some promo cards as well all you have to do is pledge uh, we'll donate however you see the word best for you um, five dollars or more on my patreon to be entered into this draw and obviously if I get lots more people coming along onto this draw and I, I pass my limit of seventy dollars I will start sending out uh, copies of games they'll be small games because you know it, paying for something to go all the way around the world in the middle of nowhere can be expensive but um yes i i am glad and happy to do so because you know we're talking board games and it'd be nice to give something back to you guys um that's why i give out the promos or i you know offer them as part of you know my the donation scheme okay so let me pick up these cards because i don't want to cut the video okay and i am going to use the seventh continent as my guide for <laughs> the the draw okay i've named a character from the seventh continent with one of my contributors so for instance robert is elliot who is um a very suave english man we have olivier who's going to be the french person in the game which is ferdinand in you go Okay, we then have um, Curly T, who's going to be Keelan with the orange hair, which is the botanist. And then we have Mary, who's going to be Elephant Girl. And then I'm going to save Berkey the pleasure of being a Victor Frankenstein. Yes, there you go, into the bag. Okay. So here we go, no cutting, no cheating, no editing. I shuffle the bag like so. This is good bag building game. Um, and then I draw one out and this is my lucky winner. Drum roll please. And I have one in my hand and it is Ferdinand, which means Olivier. Double check, double check, triple check. Yes, it's Olivier, congratulations. I will send you some promos and the last night in the soundtrack department. No, <laughs> I'll, send it, I'll send you some stuff in the post, chap. Okay, so there you go. That's my blog, that's what I do. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any comments about, you know, what I've, I've played or anything else, leave them in the comments below. Look out for some more reviews, look out for some more Kickstarters, which are coming, is there anything coming this month? No, there's nothing coming this month so far. Um, I'm going to be pledging on Kickstarters <laughs> this month. Okay, so I'll say thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you know someone that might appreciate this video, share it with them. And if you want to help out with the, the my production costs, um, you can and my website by going to my Patreon 
Board Games Everybody Should, or you can just go and check out my BoardGamesEverybodyShould.com website, which I keep updating and, and tweaking, especially now I've got my lovely new logo. Thank you, Tor. Um, and um, I'll say ciao for now. Take care. And always remember to please play nice. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good? I got some board games.